Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kieran and this channel is called Thrifted Living. If you're new, thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to be talking about something that I've been wanting to talk with you guys about for a while. My new dog Pip is here right now. I've been wanting to talk with you guys for a while and it's about my mental health and what I would like to do, I'm starting to share like a new um, filming and editing schedule and posting schedule. So on Fridays, I would like to either share like a vlog, like a weekly vlog or a life update or, you know, just a little more in depth about like me aside from like DIYs and hauls and things like that. So um, today I would like to talk about my mental health and a new part of my mental health journey that I'm starting to learn more about that I haven't talked with you guys about. It's something that I've been struggling with for a long time and has always been a component of my mental health struggle, but it hasn't been um, as like deeply explored as it finally is now. Let's just jump right into it and I'll discuss with you everything that has been going on and and just how this is, and I, and I guess I say like, that this part that's finally starting to get some more um, time in, in terms of like my diagnosis because it's something that I've been struggling with for a while and I have acknowledged it as something that's separate from everything else I've been struggling with, but I haven't had the validation in this particular part of my mental health until recently with my most recent psychiatrist. I've alluded to the fact that a while, if for a while, that there are other parts of my um, my mental health that I'm struggling with that I haven't felt comfortable talking about. And so if you're new, I struggle with severe obsessive compulsive disorder. I've struggled with that since I was a child. And over the past four years or so, I finally was able to get some treatment and um, I'm able to take a medication that has helped me with that. Sorry, my nose itches. I have a medication that has literally changed my life in terms of how I function with severe OCD. And last year I got really sick in the middle of, actually it was maybe like a month, like a, it would have been a year ago, like in February-ish, give or take a little bit. And I got really sick and I was, I ended up finding out that I'm struggling with bipolar disorder. And that has been a, a like another enlightening moment for me. You know, I always knew that there was the OCD, but I also knew that there was something with my mood going on as well. And again, since I was a child, when I say I got sick last year, it was not the first time that something like that had happened where I was very mentally ill at the time. And it was, definitely connected with my mood and in other parts that I'm going to talk with you guys about now. So that's always been like a big part of my mental health journey. And so I'm now taking a mood stabilizer in addition to the medication for obsessive compulsive disorder as like the two things to work on the OCD and also the bipolar disorder. So upon recently talking with my therapist, my I mean my new psychiatrist, I was curious about the difference between bipolar one and bipolar two, which I had been watching something and I saw them both, you know, shown. And I was like, I'm curious as to which one I'm struggling with because I really didn't know. And so at my appointment, I spoke with my therapist and not my therapist, my psychiatrist, sorry. I spoke with my psychiatrist and she brought something up that I wasn't honestly surprised about, but I was surprised in a sense that I felt like somebody was finally listening to me and acknowledging what I'm really struggling with. So she actually brought up the thought that perhaps I'm not struggling with bipolar disorder and perhaps I'm actually struggling with schizoaffective disorder, which is in my basic way of understanding it, it's a combination of schizophrenia and a mood disorder. So it's like a schizophrenia with a mood type disorder the mood component I guess and some of that might that might be very shocking to you guys because I have not talked about that t side of everything the um the side that would be labeled as like a schizophrenic kind of situation so that's what I want to talk a little bit with you guys about today I'm really nervous because I've never I've never talked about everything like e even just like in this basic level I've never shared with many people even in my personal life. I even just recently started sharing that, like maybe within the past three years where I've started sharing those other components. So I'm nervous, but I 
I feel comfortable talking about it now. And let's just, let, let me get a little bit more into it. So I've always struggled with delusions and that's something that when I was really sick with my obsessive compulsive disorder, I would say the most ill I've ever been, like it comes in waves, but the most ill I've ever been was right around like 2020, like the, um, the, sorry, the spring of 2020 was when I was the most ill and I was struggling with a lot of delusional thinking. Again, I feel like I'm not, there's Finley. Oh, you want, hold on, let me open the window for him a little bit. He likes to look out the window. <laughs> there, and now I have Pip coming up. Okay, all the puppies, are you ready? Sorry about that, I had a puppy interruption. There's there's Pip, my mom's dog. I got really sick and in spring of 2020 and I was struggling with a lot of delusional thoughts and delusional thinking. And I don't think that I'm quite ready to share what my delusions were because it's very, very personal. It's kind of like talking about your compulsions and obsess obsessions. They only make sense to you fully, like the person that's experiencing them. So if somebody else had OCD and I was talking with them, I might not understand their perspective. I would understand in like a general sense of like, okay, that like makes sense to me in terms of, you know, why that might be concerning but I won't understand like why they do the compulsions that they do based on what, what obsession they have and, and so on. So delusions are, are very personal and very, it can be for me, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, so I'm not that I'm embarrassed that it happened, but it's just embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that like I was really struggling with that. So I was struggling with a lot of delusions and it was a, a different part of my OCD that I, when I was talking with my therapists, I wasn't getting in my, in my psychiatrist, I felt like I wasn't getting the proper, like I felt like there wasn't the proper understanding of that delusional component. One psychiatrist that I talked to had actually thought that I might be struggling with something that would be like obsessive compulsive disorder with psychotic features. So it's OCD, but parts of it um, like are on the line of psychotic psychosis type stuff. So that was validating. And that happened back in like 2020. I was like, okay, like that takes into account this other thing, these delusional thoughts, this, you know, break with reality that I was experiencing. And then nothing happened with it. And then I felt like everybody I talked to after that was like, it's just really severe OCD. It's just really severe OCD. And while it was severe OCD, there was also this other part of it that wasn't being addressed. That was, I felt like just being ignored. And that was the delusion. That was the delusional part of it. When I spoke with my newest psychiatrist, she brought it up as maybe this is schizoaffective disorder. And maybe the delusions in the past that you've been experiencing were actually episodes of psychosis, which I felt so validated hearing that because I I felt like over the years I've been in a crowded room screaming at the top of my lungs like there's more going on here there's more that I'm struggling with but I felt like nobody was listening and and also like a lot of times what people say is like I I hide it very well like I hide my my mental health struggles very well and it's that's definitely just been like a coping mechanism for me and over the past few years there have been times when I've been struggling that I just can't I can't hide it those moments that I've had over the past few years and honestly prior years as well I've had other episodes of psychosis prior have you know weren't totally looked at it at, looked at as psychosis and delusions they were looked at as you know severe obsessive compulsive disorder and and that was it. When she mentioned the schizoaffective disorder, I was like, I felt really validated. I felt like, yes, it, it encompasses everything. The obsessive compulsive disorder, the schizoaffective disorder is like a schizophrenia type um, diagnosis with a mood component. That's like the three things. Those are the, the, the trifecta of things that I'm struggling with. And I just, it's uh, and as of right now it's not a formal diagnosis we're still open to options as to is this is this bipolar or is this schizoaffective disorder or is it bipolar with you know episodes of psychosis you know there's a variety of of options that it could be i'm happy to say that i haven't had any 
psychotic episodes or episodes of psychosis or delusions in quite a while. And in addition to the medication I'm taking for obsessive compulsive disorder and that mood stabilizer for what was thought was the bipolar disorder, I'm also taking an antipsychotic and the three of those together have changed my life. And I know I sound like a broken record talking about it, but finding the right medication and the right therapy and and being open to trying things with your mental health is absolutely amazing and incredible. I'm so grateful that I didn't give up. And when I had failed medication trials that put me in the hospital, you know, multiple times, like I didn't give up and I found ones that work. And I also found somebody that listens to me and is open to exploring all options. When she said schizoaffective disorder, I was like, thank you. Like, I finally felt like somebody wasn't just being like, it's just, it, your, your OCD is really bad. Because it's always been more than that to me. It's always been, if my OCD is this bad, then why am I so delusional? Why am I and, and the fact that she said psychosis too was extremely validating, you know, because in my head I was always like, okay, these are just, you know, I'm just having a hard time. But like, no, they were, it was delusions. It was episodes of psychosis where I, it, it was a break with reality, you know, that I was struggling with. I didn't have my OCD diagnosis until I was 33, I think. And that so it's been a lifetime of not knowing what's wrong and knowing something's wrong but not being able to help it and so i've just learned like in terms of masking it i've just learned how to how to hide it as best i can and over the past few years it just became i couldn't hide it anymore and that was really really hard i couldn't imagine myself like from the time i shared that very first video where i talked with you guys about my struggle with the obsessive compulsive disorder I couldn't imagine that I'd be here right now and I'm and I'm so grateful to be able to say that and and it's hard because you know my I lost my mom uh a, a, over a month ago like a month and a half ago and I cannot imagine what I would be like right now if I hadn't been having the treatment and the therapy and everything that I've had I, I can't imagine how Kieran from 2020 would have handled this, if that makes sense. Like I, I, I just, I, I don't know how I would have, how I would have been able to function. I've received help from therapy and I have found this combination of medications that it's just right. And for those of you who are looking into medication treatment, I was very hesitant to start. I was very hesitant with the OCD medication. And then when it was time to try a mood stabilizer, I was very nervous about that and very nervous about the antipsychotic. I I was so scared because I just didn't know what, what it meant and I I couldn't fathom how it would actually change anything, if that makes sense. Like you're so, you become so ingrained in these thought processes and these fears and compulsions and delusions that you don't, you can't understand how a medication would change that, if that makes sense. I always say like when I'm cleaning and stuff like that, I find my mental health places. Like I'll find a bag of trash that I couldn't throw out because I thought there was something important in it that I had to keep. I'll find, um, like, it's a lot of a lot of the times it's things I don't throw out. I couldn't throw out because I was afraid I needed to keep them. Some clothing that I thought was contaminated and I could never wear it again, but I also couldn't throw it out so it wouldn't contaminate anybody else. And I'll also find pictures on my phone. I will find pictures of, you know, my, I I would take hundreds of pictures of spaces before I left. Or if I was out at a store, I would take hundreds of pictures of things that I thought I needed to take pictures of the floor, the items, the ceiling, you know, my hands, like all of these things. So when I look back at my camera roll, I'm like, oh my gosh, there are thousands of pictures of the floor at a store. And I don't do that anymore. Like, I, I don't need to do that. I'm clear. Um, I can talk. Like, look, what, watching videos in the past where I, when I was really talking about my mental health, I couldn't talk. I was saying 
the same sentence, the same words over and over again for like minutes on end because it wasn't right. It didn't feel right. And a lot of people think OCD is like, you know, having things perfectly clean, having things perfectly organized. Yes, that is the situation for some people, but it's so much more for, for other people. Like it's not just about being clean and tidy. I, my OCD in particular, I will make a huge mess because I cannot throw things out. I cannot clean things up. I cannot properly care for things at times. Now the OCD, I I do have that fairly under control. And and that's, so that's been really good. I'm just learning. I, I'm just learning about everything. And I'm really nervous to talk with you guys about this. I'm really nervous to put this out on the internet. But so many of you have been with me for the long run and I want to share with you like the whole picture and the whole story of what's of what is, you know, what I'm learning about my mental health and what I've really been struggling with because yes, the obsessive compulsive disorder has been hard and then learning about the bipolar, the possible bipolar disorder has been hard, but a lot of the really, really hard stuff has been what I can now call delusions and delusions and psychosis. And I'm my my and I want to make it clear too that my my psychiatrist said like we're exploring all of this. So, you know, are these episodes that I experienced in the past of delusions psychotic episodes, you know, and were they moments of psychosis and same thing with like the bipolar it, were these like manic episodes or depressive episodes but the fact that she's now including the schizoaffective option is like it i just felt like after i got off the phone with her i was like so thankful and so relieved that somebody was finally like yeah let's look into these other parts let's look into these you know this other you know component that definitely is there and we just need to sort of explore it more so Thank you to my psychiatrist. I don't think she watches my videos, but I'm grateful that you listen and you're open to options. I'm nervous to share this with you guys, but I want to be honest and open with you. And I hope that this video can help somebody. I encourage you if you're on a mental health journey yourself, don't give up. You can get help. There are so many resources there that can help you. I believe in you and I know that you can find resources that will fit for you. And, and if you're on a medication journey as well, like a mental health medication journey, it is hard. Don't, don't, you know, there, it's definitely hard to find ones that fit for you, especially when the ones that you try are not right <laughs> and they make you feel terrible. Know that there likely is a different option for you. I had three failed medication trials. No, I'm sorry, two failed medication trials for OCD. And I finally found one that works for me. And the two failed trials that I had, one of them made me so sick, like so very, very sick. It just did not agree with my body. I was in the hospital multiple times and I didn't want to try anything after that one. I was like, nope, I'm done. And then I was like, no, I can't function. I need, I need to figure something out. So yeah. So I found the medications. I found a psychiatrist that is really receptive and is open to options and, and is hearing my entire story and history and not just saying, oh, it's just this. It can't be possibly be anything else because I hide it well, if that makes sense. And I kind of feel like that's what's happened in the past. It's been, oh, well, it can't be schizoaffective disorder because you're hiding it. You would be hiding it too well. I would have never thought in the past that I would be talking about schizoaffective disorder. And, you know, my understanding of something like that prior to hearing about, you know, the possibility that I might be struggling with it is completely different. You know, my understanding now is so much more clear than it was, you know, several months ago before I had even really entertained that idea. I want to, to normalize the conversation around mental health and, you know, know that like, Yes, I'm struggling with mental health disorders, but I've taken a lot of time and effort to find the right medication and therapy. And, you know, I'm I'm trying my best. You know, I'm, I'm trying to do everything I can to try to live my life the best I can. I'm just grateful, I guess I could say. I'm just grateful that, that I'm at this point in my mental health journey. It's been a long one, but I, I'm doing it, you know? So I actually need to go take a medication. I need to go take my mood stabilizer. And um, yeah, 
if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. If you'd like to have something, a more private conversation, you can message me on Facebook at Thrifted Living or on Instagram at Thrifted Living YouTube. Take all of this as just my information that I'm giving to you from my perspective. I'm not a doctor. This is just my non-doctor un understanding of, you know, everything. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for always being there. Watching back some of my videos is so hard and I will include a playlist because I'm not going to take them down. I want people to be able to see them, but I will include a playlist of like some of the videos where I was really, really struggling if you want to have like a reference point if you're new. But thank you all so much for always being there and always being encouraging and being with me through everything and the highs and the lows and um I just, I'm really grateful for you guys. I'm really grateful for this extended family that I have here on YouTube. So thank you all so much for watching and listening to me ramble at the camera. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.